Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my October mid-month wrap up. So in the month of October I managed to read a total of five books which isn't amazing for me but October did get kind of off to a slower start. Um, I was moving as I've mentioned in the first weekend kind of of October so I just didn't have as much time for reading. Um, I'm actually filming this on the 23rd of October and things have definitely picked up in the second half of the month so hopefully October will still be an awesome reading month for me but let's just jump straight in and talk about the five books that I did manage to read in the first half of the month. So the first book that I managed to complete in the month of October was The Princess Bride by William Goldman. This is a movie that I have seen a lot but I'd never read the book. I actually picked this up to fulfill the challenge of reading a book um, that is on the top 100 fantasy book list. Um, I bought this and it was on that list so I decided to read this one to fulfill that challenge. This is one of the rare cases where I believe that the movie is a little bit better than the book. Um, I did still really enjoy this book. I gave the book 4.25 stars, but I did rewatch the movie again after having read the book, and I would definitely give the movie a 5 star. I love the movie so much. Um, I find it kind of a really interesting concept in this book that the author is abridging a story that he himself heard when he was a child. I mean, it's not a real story, but that's the format that he's like telling this story to us in is that he's abridging a book that is already a published book. And I found the really the abridged comments really like interesting. This is like a really enjoyable story. I just really do love the story and the characters. There's actually a chapter in the back of this book um, that deals with the author abridging the first chapter of the sequel, Buttercup's Baby. And uh, I need me a Buttercup's Baby sequel because I would just be all about that. But yeah, I did still really enjoy this. I don't think it's as good as the movie, but I did give it, as I said, 4.25 stars. The next book that I managed to complete in the month of October was Don't Look Now and Other Stories by Daphne du Maurier. This is a short story collection by Daphne du Maurier which contained five short stories. Um, I could actually tell when I looked at the reviews on Goodreads that it seems that different like editions of this book do have different stories in it which I found a little bit interesting but Don't Look Now is the main story in it um, which there is a movie based on that short story which I have seen previously and that was probably my favourite short story in the collection. I gave that one four stars, but it did go downhill for me from there. I gave, I think the other stories like a three and a half star, a three star, a two star, and a 2.25 star. Um, I do like Daphne du Maurier's um, writing, but some of the storylines in these short stories I just didn't really enjoy. Um, overall, I would give the collection a three star, um, but I definitely think that I'll probably stick to du Maurier's full length stories from now on. The next book I completed was Dark Hope by Monica McGurk. This is actually a book that I was approved for in NetGalley a long time ago, so thank you to NetGalley and the publishers for approving me to read this book. This is the first book in I think it's a trilogy, and it's a young adult um, paranormal type of story that follows a girl who was um, kidnapped as a child, and she was recovered, and when she was recovered she had a mark on her that looks kind of like a tattoo um, that her family parents have never been able to remove. As she's grown up, she her parents have divorced. Well, they're not divorced, they're separated. But she is living, has lived her whole life with her father, who has become extremely religious and extremely overprotective. And at the start of this story, um, the main character is moving from living with um, her father to move back in with her mother. This, to me, wasn't kind of any kind of groundbreaking story. It really is just your typical kind of YA paranormal romance type story. Um, it has all those aspects of a YA paranormal romance in that it's fast, like fast paced, really easy to just like sink into and read quite quickly. The main problem I had with this story, because I normally find those really um, enjoyable, the main kind of problem that I had with this particular one was that I just wasn't super invested in the main romance going on. I just I really didn't get it. I didn't feel it. And that really kind of took me out of the story and didn't allow me to just like sink into it the way that I wanted. Um, it was still definitely an enjoyable story. I did find it interesting. Um, I gave it three and a half stars, but yeah, I just didn't super love the romance. I will probably continue with the trilogy and hopefully maybe as the series goes on, I will become more invested. But in this one, I just wasn't super into it. The next book I completed was Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour. This is a... Um, young adult, I believe, contemporary 
story that follows a girl who is just graduating high school but she does have a job in Hollywood as a set designer um, and it has kind of a mystery aspect to the story in that at the start of the story the main character finds a letter from a recently deceased old Hollywood star and kind of through that letter kind of a mystery unravels and it is also an LGBTQIA plus story in that the main character is a lesbian. Um, I have, I'd heard good things about this but I still didn't know how much I would really like it. I actually really really enjoyed this story. I enjoyed the characters, I enjoyed kind of the plot and the slight mystery aspect that we had going on. I really liked the tone of the whole story. I just, I really really did enjoy it. I gave it four and a half stars. I definitely would recommend it um, as something that people should read because I really enjoyed it. If you're looking to read more LGBTQIA plus um, literature, then definitely check this one out because it does have a very strong um, lesbian um, romance in it, which I really enjoyed. And the whole story overall was just really enjoyable. And as I said, I gave it four and a half stars. And the final book that I read in the first half of October was Poppy Done to Death by Charlene Harris. This is the eighth and what I believe was supposed to be well, I don't know, final book in the um, Aurora Tea Garden series. This book was published in 2003, and just this year, Charlene Harris has released a ninth book. Now that I've read this eighth book, it kind of seems like maybe it was always planned that there was going to be future books surrounding this character because not everything was kind of tied off. But then at the same time, that still annoys me because why did we have to wait 13 years to get this next installment? I mean, I didn't wait 13 years because I've just read this one and the next one's coming out, but if I'd read this 13 years ago and it hadn't been wrapped up and then I had to wait 13 years for the next installment, that would have pissed me off. So I do think I'm going to read the next um, book that's just come out and kind of see um, where that story goes. It'll be quite interesting to see how the tone and the story and stuff might have changed over 13 years that the writer has been, like, she's been writing and publishing other stories, so obviously her writing is going to probably have developed a lot, so that should be interesting. Hopefully it doesn't take away, like, from the series. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to read. Um, I kind of want it to finish on this book. I want this to be a final book that just wraps everything up and doesn't con keep to continue the series, but I don't know what we're going to get from this, but I will probably check it out. Anyway, I enjoyed the mystery in this one. It was one of the more enjoyable installments in the series, in my opinion. Um, I gave this one 3.25 stars. So those are the five books that I read in the first half of October. If you've read any of these books and had any thoughts, I would love to chat to you guys in the comments down below or about any books that you've been reading so far in October and really enjoying. I would love to chat in the comments down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That's all I've got for this video today. Bye, guys.